You gonna go ahead and begin? So my name is Christopher Beto. Uh, I'm presenting today about Pick for Review. This is an open source tool created in France. Uh, I encountered this earlier this year over with the OpenStreetMap France community. And I think it's a really great tool. I'd love to see more people using it, especially in the US. So I'm going to tell you about it, how to use it, and hopefully convince you to uh, use it for your own mapping. So just to start, let's talk about what Pick for Review actually is. Uh, so created by Adrian Pavier, and Adrian came up with this idea to use pictures for reviewing any type of geospatial data, and this morphed eventually into a tool for using pictures to actually take existing OpenStreetMap data and add more detail to it or verify and validate it. So uh, he uses open license pictures. This includes MapLary, OpenStreetCam, Wikimedia Commons, or Flickr. And he also then uses the different APIs with OSM and focuses on different types of missions. So you can see a few example missions here. Uh, such as smoothness of a road, wheelchair crossings, or bus stop types. So there's many reasons that Pick Review is a great tool to use uh, alongside your other OpenStreetMap tools. So one of these is that it makes it easier to take street level imagery and actually directly tie it into a workflow. Uh, you don't have to more create your own workflow of glancing at the picture, glancing at the map. Instead, this uh, drills down to specific tasks that you can focus on. So the imagery serves as a way to have evidence um, for whatever the map features are that you want to edit. And it allows you to bring a lot more details to existing features uh, than somebody might have added initially. You also can link these images to OSM. So it will add a tag that actually says what the uh, imagery source was, as well as even the image key. It allows you to collaborate uh, with a larger group of people by sharing specific tasks and having people globally come in and help you complete them. And finally, it's an open source community tool. So it's very easy for you to get involved with, adjust it to your own needs, and give feedback on. So a quick look at some of the sources. Uh, there's Essentially, we get hundreds of millions of photos. Uh, I'm not sure how many Wiki Commons, Wikimedia Commons even has that are geotagged. Uh, but with all these different sources combined, there's a lot of potential data out there. And when we look at the incompleteness of OpenStreetMap, a lot of the problems it has as far as uh, vague detail, this means we have quite a bit of resources that we can use to, to harvest more data. So the way this tool works uh, is it's based on missions. So by creating a mission, uh, you choose a specific focus area. So you can see in the, the image here, the example is bicycle parking. And it's asking what bicycle parking looks like uh, in this specific area on the map. So it's found an existing feature. So in this case, it's querying the overpass ABI. And it's actually finding that feature uh, because you set up a mission looking for bicycle parking. Uh, in other cases, you can also use Osmos to look up things that need specific fixes. Uh, and again, the imagery will then uh, reference it. So the pick for carto.js library uh, it keeps the APIs from these different imagery services uh, in that script. So when you're feeding it in longitude and latitude, uh, it's able to display nearby images and often more specifically images where the camera angle actually faces toward what you want to review. And then the pictures will load uh, in order of proximity as well as date. So you get the freshest imagery and the closest uh, to what you're trying to review. So the results of actually using this tool are uh, a change that pushed OSM. So when you're using Pick for Review, you're going to sign in with your OpenStreetMap username. And then the tool is going to use those credentials to push the changes back to OSM. Uh, it's also going to make sure to take that active image that you were viewing at the time of confirming a, a feature or attribute. And it's going to write that as the image tag. Uh, there's also an option to take a map area, and we'll look back here. You can see in gray where it says there are no pictures. Uh, you can actually export that as a GeoJSON and use that uh, for your own field work with mapping and know that you need to do some targeted image capture there. 
So that's a great, uh, a great tool to also support your missions. It feeds right back into the review process that you have by making sure that you have the data you need. Uh, and finally, the data quality improves. So this is a really unique way to actually get the, the fine detail that other tools uh, don't really focus on adding. Let's see. So we're going to go through a step-by-step -step of how you're going to use this tool to create your first mission. So when you visit the URL for the tool, uh, which is in the bottom right here, you're going to see this screen. So it's going to give you a quick overview. Uh, you can review some of the themes. There's a, a small how-to link, uh, and even a link to the repository. But if you click Start Now, you're going to go straight to the missions page. So you'll see it as a list. There's also a map view worldwide. And some of these are in English, some of these are in French, some are in Japanese. Uh, it's being used all over the world, but not very much in the US. So you'll see a lot of international missions existing. In any one of these, you can click on the details, and you can see a little more about what the author of that mission is asking for. So the author is uh, an OpenStreetMap contributor who has just created a mission on this tool asking for crowdsourced help. And if you click Start, then you can go straight into the review process. Uh, on the left here, you'll see some of the different themes. I'll, I'll go into detail what those are. But some of them can be accessibility. Some of them are POIs and shops. Some are transportation or even culture. So once you click Start, you'll get this quick message. And it's giving you some tips about how to proceed. So most of it's very straightforward. Um, it gives you some, some extra options, like using an external OSM editor for more advanced option, or missions. But mostly we won't focus on that today. And you also have a point system. So over time, you will get points and go on a leaderboard, uh, which we'll also take a look at. So the first task that comes up in this mission uh, is asking if the crossing is accessible using a wheelchair. So it has images that. Uh, sort of illustrate what we're looking for. Uh, in this case, it's, it's just more of a clip art. Uh, but you can see the descriptions of the answers. So you can choose from yes, no, one side only, or badly. So it's going to write those tags um, actually back to OpenStreetMap once you choose it. Uh, so you'll see the images pop up. You can see the crosswalks in the images. Uh, you can use the magnifying glass to get a little more fine detail. And as you scroll right, you'll be able to see all the other nearby images. On the map at bottom left, uh, it's slightly cut off here, but you'll see in blue the position of your current image. And then uh, with a little more transparency, you'll see the other images around it. So as you scroll to the right, it's going to highlight which image you're looking at. And then in red is the feature you're reviewing. So in this case, we can see uh, that the crosswalk has a curb cut next to it and it's accessible for, uh, for someone in a wheelchair. So if you want to create your own mission, uh, you'll start at the top right, the plus sign for create a mission. It's going to take you to this screen, uh, giving you two options. So one is using a template. This is a really easy way to proceed. And another is from scratch. So we'll take a look at both of these. So from template, uh, essentially on the left you see most of the template options. So the one I chose in this case is bus stop type. And this one's going to ask you if the bus stop has a shelter, or only a pole, uh, or any other details that we'll, we'll see in the next slide. Then you choose an area. So you can choose the name of a city. Uh, you can choose an even wider area if you'd like, or something more specific. And if you click any of the icons at top, they'll also show you um, Essentially the same that you see on this list here, just broken down into smaller lists for those categories. So this is the, uh, the highly configurable version, the advanced mission. So what we do here is we can search on the map for an area or city name. We can also draw a bounding box, so just clicking the map and dragging. Uh, we can choose our data source. The two options right now are Osmos, and then we can choose the kind of error that we're looking for. Or if we choose overpass, we actually will paste in the overpass query. So there's a link there uh, to the overpass API documentation and to the wizard for overpass. So you may be looking just for uh, bicycle lanes, and you may search for Austin, Texas. 
you get that, you paste the query in, you hit next. It's going to take a while to pull all of Austin, Texas bicycle lens, but eventually you have that set up. So in this case, I've looked at Austin. Um, I've looked for one-way streets. So I want to use imagery to confirm if that's actually a one-way street. And I've queried everything that has one way as yes as the tag. So this is just a, a way of validating something that's already been marked. It'd be a lot more difficult uh, if you wanted to find any kind of road, regardless of tag, and uh, review if it's one way uh, for such a large area as Austin. So you're going to have to review every road and go through the images. So something like that you may want to use just on a very small neighborhood. Uh, so the next tab, once you've chosen the data source in the area, you're going to choose the mission details. Uh, so really, you're going to choose a theme. So this is road-based theme. And then when you get to type, uh, there's a couple different options, such as uh, adding new data, which isn't fully supported yet. But uh, in this case, we're adding details on existing data. So it means we're just modifying the attributes. As we get to the next step with editor setup, this is how we kind of set up the UI. So it's going to say uh, a certain question. So this is where we get language support very easily. So in English this time, we're asking, is this street one way? And then we get to go through and add these different answers. So for me, I used the OSM wiki. I looked up the main options that you're going to get with one way. So you have yes, no, reversible, or alternating. Uh, you can also add more detail, like the definitions of these tags right in that question. Uh, and that way, you can make sure that the user who's reviewing your task doesn't have to do any research. Everything's right there for them. And so it makes it a very quick tool for them to, to understand the nature of. Let's see. And finally, the last step there is publishing. Uh, and this disabled tab at the bottom is for you to disable the task temporarily. Um, sometimes this is when there's no data available, something like that. So a quick overview of the impact this has had worldwide. Um, a lot of these are still in progress, so we can't always measure the impact, but we can see where it's being used. So very heavily in Europe, uh, primarily right around France, but a lot across the European Union. Uh, a few of them are out there in some of the Portuguese islands. And Tanzania, I think a few people started picking this up after the last conference there this summer. And then Japan actually has a pretty strong following it, uh, with it as well. Uh, we've also seen it in Bangladesh, Mexico, Nicaragua. And I think the only ones in the US are ones that I've created in the last few weeks. So there's two in Detroit for reviewing uh, accessibility of crosswalks, and one in Portland with the, the bus stops, and I think another in San Francisco. Uh, there's a leaderboard that shows the top 20 users. And I think the top person has made uh, something like three to 400 edits in it. So it's very lightly used, but there definitely is a, a number of edits being made. Uh, this is an older chart here, but uh, once Pick for Review was added to the list from uh, How Do You Map website, we saw it actually uh, worked its way up the list. But I'm not sure if this is a weekly number or not. And there's a statistics section on the website. So I pulled this from that section. And we can see what share of the, uh, the missions are belonging to certain themes. So at bottom right, you'll see the list of themes. Uh, accessibility is probably, let's see, it's one of the bigger ones, but it looks like equipment is the biggest. So equipment can include something like bicycle racks, fire hydrants, uh, other POIs that are, are not necessarily belonging to those other categories, I suppose. And statues actually are one that's in culture. We've also seen a few of those where people are reviewing if they uh, can mark what type of statue it is, if it's a monument, if it's a, a tomb, things like this. Um, there's also different missions for things like addressing. Uh, so I think that one can go often under shop or even other. But overall, there are a lot of different categories. Uh, there's broad issues that you can address with this. And it's really easy to customize for your own needs. So some of the future improvements, uh, I haven't contributed more than just making lots of issues and bug reports myself. But uh, what we really want to do is support the image viewers, uh, particularly for Mapillary and OSC. Uh, this gives us a lot more power to show higher quality and resolution images. Uh, it allows us to do things like zoom in the viewer rather than use just the magnifying glass. 
Uh, with the Mapillary Viewer, we can also then render uh, what's been detected in the image. And we'd actually like to start using that as a way to create missions with Mapillary as a source. So we can do something like show you where we found crosswalks and then have you review that whole area to actually add them to the map. There's also uh, an advantage with using the different image viewers that we can render the 360 degree images properly. So using them as a JPEG, uh, the way it's currently done, it will stretch them out into a, a wide panorama. But if we actually build the viewer in there, it makes it a lot easier to uh, see the full 360 image as well as see as you rotate it on the map which direction you're looking. So being an open source repository, uh, it is something I encourage everyone to review and contribute to if you're a developer. Right now there's one maintainer and that's Adrian. Uh, so we really hope to grow the number of people that are involved with this project. Uh, you can see some of the, the issues that are high and medium priority right now on the project. So 360 degree images is right there front and center for example. Uh, creating new points in OSM. So right now again we're just able to review existing data but we're not pushing uh, new features to the map. Um, so a lot of these need people with wide skill sets with a lot of experience and other projects that they can bring to this one. Uh, so this is evolving quickly and we hope it will continue to do so. Uh, the imagery that's coming in from Mapillary and OSC uh, would really benefit from people who work on those platforms to come in and contribute. So uh, that's encouraged that people bring those skills in as well as people who have experience with Overpass, uh, the OSM API, and Osmos. Uh, so overall, it's a really great tool. I, I really want to see it take off in the US. I think it's very user friendly for people who are non-technical. It's a great way to show the true power of street level imagery as far as improving data on OpenStreetMap. And it's really a, a way to have a workflow without headaches uh, for actually making use of that imagery to directly have an impact just in a few seconds of, of submitting some edits. So if you have technical questions, those are always welcome as well. Uh, Edrian provided his contact information here as well. Uh, he's in Rennes, France. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter. He's providing updates when he has new features. Uh, you can check out, of course, the repository. You'll see uh, the, new, the uh, new things merged to master that come out as features as well. And hopefully we'll have more people signed up on that contributors list, more people reporting issues, uh, as well as more people contributing imagery that they can help, uh, therefore, contribute to improving OpenStreetMap. So thank you, and I'll take any questions. That's an option, but Flickr also has much more limited capability of things like the camera angle, um, as well as using multiple images in sequence. So if you're using uh, like Mapillary or OpenStreetCam, you're actually going to get denser photos. So I think that's the best way to go. But Flickr works. <laughs> Okay, thanks very much.